Hello and welcome to this updated video guide for completing Containment Bay Z1T9 in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. My name is TSDS and in this video you'll learn everything you need to know to be a hero. Other than one mechanic, Zervan is pretty mistake friendly, so let's take a look. As the main tank, pull the boss on the left side. Off tanks can pretty much be a DPS again. Almost immediately, Zervan will dice up the eastern quarter of the floor, deleting it. Then he'll delete the north of the room. Once he starts to delete the western quarter, the main tank should move to the only remaining section. Zervan will then delete this as well. During this phase, watch out for the AoEs that appear under random players. With the floor destroyed, you'll fall down and the actual fight will begin. Tanks should pull the boss to the north area of the arena. Zervan will periodically use Saw, which creates two line AoEs from his position. One of these will target the northeast and the other will target the northwest. This means if you tank him in the north, it's super easy to avoid because they'll go off either side of you. Now, if you tank him somewhere else, these line AoEs can come out at odd positions, which can force your group to reposition. Staying in the north is the easiest method. Zervan will vanish when using Saw and will follow it up with two overlapping line AoEs, which creates an X shape on the floor. While this is going on, some other players will get this red fireball above their heads, with faint AoE indicators around them. The X AoE will execute and shortly after, all fireball players will explode. Immediately after this, one of the healers will get a stack up marker so everyone should stand on top of them. The fireball players will leave a patch of fire on the ground during this stack up marker, so it's better to drop these at the side. At the start of the fight, two players will get fireballs, but later on, four players will be affected. Just dodge the X AoE and try to avoid the players with the fireballs. For another attack, Zervan will also occasionally turn towards a random player and cast Wave Cannon. This is just an unmarked line AoE, but it hits fairly hard, so be sure to move out of the way. At around 55%, the boss will move towards the centre of the room and put a patch of ice on the ground. Standing in this will slow your movement. He can follow this up with something called Biting Halberd, detailed later, but DPS will be too high unless someone is AFK. Thus, before long, you'll hit 50% and start Phase 3. In this phase, Zervan will jump out to the north and you'll have three sets of adds to deal with. The second and third set of adds will include an Execrated Wilt. These will start casting Meteor, so you should kill them first because that sounds scary. Tanks and healers should be aware that Execrated Will adds can use Hard Thrust, which is able to deal substantial damage without warning. It's not a bad idea to use some defensive cooldowns here, or split tanking these with the off tank. Once all of the adds are dead, Zervan will use his ultimate trying to wipe you. It looks pretty neat, but it doesn't do much damage. At this point, we enter the final phase of the fight. The same mechanics you've seen previously will return, along with some new ones. Southern Cross will target four random players with an AoE who will drop ice on the floor. This only lasts for a brief moment and will slow down movement speeds. You may also see a ring AoE that hits everywhere except for the area around the boss, so just move in for that one. For another attack, Zervan can use Biting Halberd, though rarely. This is just a massive AoE with the only safe area being at the rear of the boss, so stand behind him to avoid. Lastly, tanks and healers should watch out for a cast called Turfing. Turfing? Maybe, I don't know what... Turfing? I don't know. This attack deals multiple heavy hits to the tank over a short amount of time. In this clip, I'm both blocking and using a strong defensive cooldown, and I still take 20k damage. Tanks should mitigate this when possible, and healers should keep an eye out so they can start spamming some heals. Now, the final mechanic to cover here is the one that matters most, so listen up. During this phase, everyone will get randomly marked with either Infinite Ice or Infinite Fire, i.e. a debuff with a blue icon or a debuff with a red one. After a short time, Zervan will cast Broken Seal, creating some falling meteor indicators at random points on the floor. These will be either blue or red. If you've got the blue debuff, stand under a blue meteor. If you've got the red debuff, stand under a red one. 
If you stand under the wrong colour, or simply don't stand under one at all, then you'll get smacked with infinite anguish, which is a very hard hitting dot. Now, what's also important is that every falling meteor needs to be caught by at least one player. Any meteor allowed to hit the ground will deal massive raid damage and will probably cause a wipe. As a side note, each time this attack is used, the debuff you'll be given is random, so you won't always have the same colour. So, just deal with all of that and pop a Limmy to win the day. And that's Containment Bay Z1T9. If you've enjoyed the guide, then let me know, and if there are any other guides or perspectives you'd like to see, then check out my channel or feel free to ask me to create one. Thank you for watching and good luck.